What's going on guys? Christian here from CK Wraps. So today I'm going to show you how to efficiently cut out vinyl for the side of your car. So my car here is a two-door car and not that difficult in that sense but I do have a lower splitter on the bottom and you'll see it in a moment. I have a separate side skirt slash rocker panel. I have the door and I have the whole quarter panel itself that I want to get out of one cut. Now this kind of depends on the height of your vehicle in total. Certain cars will be taller, other cars will be a little bit shorter, but they're generally kind of all around the same. They're not usually ever more than 60 inches, few exceptions. So if your car is taller than 60 inches, which is usually just a truck, then you're gonna have to do this much differently. So this is just more generic for like your regular two and four door cars with the addition of an actual side splitter on the side. Uh, reason being is that I only had 50 feet to wrap my car and it's going to use pretty much all, exactly all of the film and I got the front lip out of it as well and both side splitters. So don't forget to like and subscribe if you guys are enjoying these videos. Uh, we do have a new mic and the sound quality should be much better. Uh, don't forget about the website. I have a website with a subscription list that you're welcome to uh, subscribe to. We have promotions and upcoming products that we do send emails out for that you kind of get first cracks at, which is really nice. Especially this color right here. This color is phenomenal. This is Vivid's Nightshade Purple and probably brought back a new love to my car. Uh, I've, this is one of my favorite colors I've done in a long time, actually. The Midnight Sun I liked just got a little tired of it. This one I really like because it's a lot darker. I'm more of a darker color kind of person, but it has a lot of extra color in it. So it has gold, purple, black, and red, I believe. Those are the colors. So that's four different colors. It's amazing. You might find it looks similar to like Avery Roaring Thunder or Rushing Riptide, but it's actually very much different. Those color flow vinyls only have two colors. This one has four, so a bit of a different uh, finish in the end. Also, super glossy, very low orange peel, as you'll see when I'm installing it. So let's get to it. What I want to do first is I want to narrow this down by cutting off the lower section first, which is the lower side skirt slash rocker panel. Now, what I want to do is make sure that I'm not too high up on here. Yes, the vinyl is resting on the floor. I'm not concerned about it, I'll dust it off. Typically I wouldn't do this. I wouldn't do it this way, I would lift the car up so that I wouldn't be running into leaving the film on the car, or sorry, on the, uh, on the floor. So I don't wanna leave myself too much up top because I'm trying to maximize how much vinyl I'll have left on the bottom. On top of that, we're able to manipulate this top section uh, a lot better because it's going to be a skinny little piece that we're going to cut out. I'm going to come a little bit higher. It's going to be a skinny piece that we're going to cut out and we'll be able to bend that up and down a little bit. So just some words of advice. Try not to leave your magnets directly on the film. It's okay with this vinyl because it has a protective cap on it right now and it's not extremely hot in here. It's a great, actually great room temperature right now. It's about 71 degrees, 70. 71 degrees Fahrenheit, around 20, 21 degrees Celsius. So let's do this. I'm gonna start at the back, it's what I usually do. And we're gonna find our bumper line. I'm gonna take my corner and I'm going to tack it to the bumper just to hold it there because I have no way of using magnets on plastic. If you have a friend to help you, you can ask them for a hand. It's not really necessary, you can do this alone. So I'm gonna cut up in my wheel well and make sure I'm staying under the wheel well. And then I'm gonna find my rocker panel. Here's my rocker panel line. This is where the quarter panel meets the rocker panel. Right there. I have to come below that line. At least you wanna come below about an inch, inch and a half or so, just to make sure you have room to maneuver the film. So this runs pretty far. I'm going to make sure that we're cutting below it. You can mark it with a crayon or you can just do it like this. Sorry, I lost it. There. 
having a hard time seeing it, that's all. I didn't want to put my back to the camera, but I'm going to, because it's going to be easier for me. And all right, and then I'm going to run that straight through and still making sure that I'm below it. Okay, there's the door. So now I'm into the door area. So I'm actually, what you're going to notice is cutting into the door. That's not a problem. I'll explain why in a second. So we're going to take this piece and this piece right here is actually fairly large. It's way larger, take note of it. It's way larger than my size skirt actually is or my rocker panel is. So I'll be able to cut out the three or four inches that I need for my splitter off of this piece right here also. So I'm gonna roll this up and get it out of the way because we're not gonna be wrapping this right now. This is actually the last piece that I do when I do the side of the car. Now this film has a protective cap on it, right? So we don't have to worry so much about scratching the surface. We just don't want to pick up any dirt because that would get underneath the, potentially get, potentially get underneath the wrap. So we have an extremely long piece, right? Perfect. I'll just take this corner and stick it down and I'll slap this on top of the roof just for now. So take note here again, the height of my side square, I haven't cleaned it properly yet. It's fine. but. It's not very tall. That piece is much taller. Now, my I've cut into my door. Well, what the hell am I gonna do right now? Now, I'm kind of in a predicament, right? Well, not really. What I can do is I can cut across the top section here, and because this beam is this beam coming down here is very skinny, we're able to manipulate the vinyl and curve it down. So I'm gonna take note of how wide that is. It's only about three inches. It means I only need to leave about maybe four or five up top here. Right. I'll stick a magnet there. And what I will do is I'll drop this piece down. Also take note how much further past the door I am going into the fender. I have quite a bit. I've got about 10 inches there. That means that I can actually cut on the door line because I have also like five inches on the back quarter panel extra. I'm actually gonna cut ahead of the door line so I don't even have to move the quarter panel because I don't want to move the quarter panel. It's the biggest piece of the car and it's the piece that you don't really wanna mess up. So I'm identifying where that door gap is. It's right there. Perfect. Now just to show you, I can take this piece and bring it down. And now we have full coverage on the front. Move it back. There we go. I have full coverage of the actual door. This is where the joint is right here for the door. End to end, we're good. Top to bottom, we're good. Does this throw off the direction of the vinyl by shifting it up and down? No, it does not. So this is a directional film. You're gonna run everything in exactly the same way. That means that we don't take this piece and flip it 180 degrees. Don't do that, because that will also throw the direction off. So keep that in mind. I'm gonna take this piece and just lay it on the hood. You can mark this piece so that you know which way it faces up or take note of your backing paper and what way the roll is standing and the way the direction of the writing is, okay? So that is the same direction that that writing should be on the, on the release liner, on the backing film. That's how it should go down over the whole car. So don't make that mistake. Now we're, we're basically ready here. Got a little bit of dusting from the paper itself. It's not a big deal, let's get it out of the way. Okay, so I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to install this film right now with the cap on, okay? Most of the way. A little bit more challenging, but not impossible. What it's going to do is it's going to really minimize any swirl marks or scratches that I could potentially get on the film, saving me from you know, throwing it out in the sun on a hot summer day, which is not, it's like been negative 20 here, or going over the vehicle with a heat gun to post heat out, or just waving a heat gun over the, uh, the surface scratches, which are more like swirl marks than nothing crazy. But again, this will just save me from doing that. So we're gonna take this and I'm gonna leave my door closed because 
I have a black car and I cheat. I'm just gonna cut on the door side and then fold the rest in. I take advantage of this because this is something that nobody will ever notice. I'll only know. And it saves me some time from wrapping into the door jam. Again, that's only on my personal car. I will wrap into the door jam on every single car, whether it's black, blue, purple, or green. And it doesn't matter if I'm doing the same color over top or not. So we're gonna take this and we wanna roll it. And we wanna try not to crinkle it because getting any wrinkles or marks in the film is just gonna be a pain to deal with. get it to about here, this is what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut off the paper and I'll do the pillar as a whole separate piece. Perfect. So what we want to do is we want to situate this film obviously in a better position. I like to start what, by getting this down nice and smooth. Now I'm under, I am under a heat lamp which is going to make it a little bit more sticky. It's not, it's not terrible though. So I'm not trying very hard to lift this. Again, this is a thicker film, right? And especially with the cap on, it's going to get really thick. So. It's going to be even thicker with the cap on. So all we, can, all we need to do here is just drape it. Look, I'm just finding that sweet spot. Right here is my focus. So we're going to squeegee that area down and get it nice and anchored. So I'm squeegeeing it with the cap on. Don't forget, we can see it here getting a little bit wrinkled up. Not a big deal. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to hold up the vinyl and it's especially rigid with the cap on. So with it being five mil and having the cap on it, this actually keeps it very straight and uniform without causing it to flop around a lot. So I'm really able to lay in and I can show you more on this side over here. I'm really able to lay into this recess without stretching into the recess. Makes it super nice, right? So again, we're minimizing exactly how many scratches we're putting in the film. Pretty much will be none. And we're not overstretching the film. Now, you won't really get glue lines with this film unless you heat it a lot. And I mean like a lot. So you can move it, you can reposition it, and it shouldn't cause any harm at all to your finish. So right here, I'm gonna pull back, because I need to roll, I wanna roll that line right here over, the body line. See, I like, to, I like to lay into this recess because this is a pretty aggressive recess, and I just find it, it holds up better over time. So it's probably sounds, probably sounds way worse with the mic than it actually is. It's not really sticking that crazy. It probably sounds very aggressive. I don't know, I'll have to hear it later. So we're gonna roll it, keep rolling it, and then keep everything nice and flowing right here. Eventually the cap is gonna resist me going to resist me to a point where I'm not going to be able to keep pushing it. The cap is only like a, a percent conformable if that, I don't even know actually. I don't think there is an actual measurement for how conformable the cap is. All right, so we've gotten all that down without even removing it yet. What I do here is I'm just going to cut and 
That's like my relief cut for this section right here. Just gotta lift it up a little bit. There we go. Now what, what you can do is you can add, I've got a wrinkle. So I'm gonna have to stop since I got a wrinkle because it's wrinkling because of the cap. What I can do is add a little shield guard and it'll make the squeegee glide a little bit better. It's fine, I'm fine, I'm fine with this right now. And we're gonna feed all this down. A nice dent there, you're gonna notice it. If you didn't already. So you can see me pushing and rolling the film. Now, how hard am I pushing? I push pretty aggressively. So the mic's just hitting me. Yeah, I push pretty aggressively on it. Now, I've got a tension line right here. I need to make a relief cut. But before I do that, I'm just gonna come back this way and get some of this down first. And I'm trying to always lay in. I have, uh, my, my fenders have been pulled, so there's a bit of a flare. And I wanna make sure that I'm laying into that flare as nice as possible. Yeah, once I get down here, if I have to remove the capping, no worries. I'm only squeegeeing a tiny, tiny bit. I'm barely causing any, any harm or damage to the film at all. So we have, I've removed my tail light and it's a good thing because this allows me to change directions of the film right now. So I'm gonna cut in the space where my tail light is. I can take the, the film and even with the cap on, I'm just gonna pull it back, okay? Maybe it will work, maybe it won't. I have to get this slack over here pulled back. So we're trying to get it a little bit better than this. These are gonna have to actually go this way. So that's kind of problematic right now. So what I'm gonna do, I might have to remove the cap at this point because I'm getting too much slack in this area right here. And I'm just looking at it, I'm just trying to think. The other side, I did it with it on the whole way through and I was able to get a lot closer to here where I was able to just feed the vinyl all the way through and pull across. It's fine, I'm not gonna risk it causing damage. So I'm gonna remove the cap at this point right now. I don't have to remove it the entire way. I do want to remove it to a point where I'm going to get some pliability in this area. So again, I don't have to even add any heat, right? I just got to pull. So we're also still trying to avoid this right now even more. I can't see with this here, so I'm going to remove it again. And I think that pulling this whole, this whole section back a little bit was going to help a lot. So what I, want, what I have to be careful for is this, this could run. So you should cut it more of a teardrop shape. I didn't. I'm just gonna be very careful in pulling the vinyl back. There we go. Perfect. Now, you might be wondering if I could have done that with the cap on. Probably, probably not. Um, it might have been just not giving me enough pliability and stretch. So we're gonna pop this up here. There we go. And again, pulling back with no heat. So there should not be any dust on the surface of the film. In case there is, we'll use a little shield guard. 
but I just removed the cap so there shouldn't be any dust on the surface. Try not to let that happen. I have too big of a piece right here, so that's my problem. There we go. It's flopping around, right? Again, we're gonna come back a little bit further here and fix this up right here. Perfect. That looks good. So we just missed one shot, one time. Squeegee glides incredibly well when you throw some shield guard on it, especially on a gloss film. And then we're good. We've worked out of our uh, problem area. Let's work over this area. So let's get that out of the way. I'm going to trim off the whole whack of what's up here right now because it's uh, way more film than I need. And it's just causing resistance, right? We don't want, we don't want to add resistance. So I'm going to draw this across a little bit more. And I just kind of lean on it. I don't, I hold on tight and I lean on the film. And then we're going to get this stuff out right here by putting tension back the other way, just gently pulling back. I like to keep tension on the film. This keeps the wrinkles away. It's perfect. So there's gonna be some swirl marks in this. I'm not worried about it. They'll heat out. It's a smaller area than I would have had to have done if I had left the, taken the cap off for the whole thing. So let's actually just trim this. And then I can open the trunk up a little bit. Again, I'm not tucking in very far by trimming on the the trunk side here. If we have a white car or anything else, we're going to want to go in a little bit further. As I get to the right about here, I'm going to take that and remove this and get it out of the way. And then down here, I'm gonna lift this up and I'm gonna finish off this corner right here. Let's get that air out of there. So I wanna be extra careful when it comes to this area here because I don't wanna overheat and overstretch. If I overheat and overstretch, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna discolor or mat out the film. I'm not gonna show you that because I don't want that to happen on my car. Pull down and around this corner, I'm going to pull the film outwards and get it to wrap around the whole corner really nicely. Get all the air out of there immediately as fast as you can. If you don't have your squeegee handy, you just use your fingers. That's about that. So we come back. I'm not going to show you all the trimming really. I'll do some, I guess, but it's really not all that important. What I want to do is show you is the ease of install with the actual film itself doing the quarter panel. That's fine. I'm not moving my hand. As you see, I'm not moving my hands. Now I'm gonna just mist a little shield guard. The vinyl has cooled slightly, which is an optimal temperature for squeegeeing right now. 
We don't want it to cool completely, but we do want it to be cooler than when we first heat it. When we first heat it, we may leave permanent impressions in the film, and we don't want that. So if we squeegee too soon after heating, that's gonna leave a mark. Down here, I'm gonna do my relief cut. And again, I'm gonna slap a little shield guard on it. And that should roll down the rest of this. It's not gonna stick to the other side because I masked it, which is exactly what I want. Again, I can do another relief cut here or just trim it a little bit closer right here. So I have slack, right? Well, slack in this area is not a good thing because we're gonna, normally what people do is they heat and they stretch down. We're not gonna heat and stretch down. I'll show you exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna heat and hold the vinyl out. And just let the vinyl relax. Just like that. I'm gonna gently place it and keep it in a spot. It's gonna cool slightly. And then I'm gonna squeegee it into the recess, not stretch it into the recess. I'm allowing it to come off of the bottom edge here so that I can actually lay the vinyl in. So now you can kind of see that little flared lip right here. It's exactly why I wanted to lay the vinyl in. Again, we're just minimizing the chance of anything happening. So now we're gonna move across the pillar. I'm gonna separate this piece right here. I don't want these to be joined. And I wanna to try to contour this, okay? Start contouring it already from way back here. That's gonna help it start wrapping around and start bringing it down this way. As opposed to doing it all in one shot, we do it in a more gradual way. Also by pulling it across this way, with just our natural ability and without adding heat, it's gonna start curling in around the other side. I could just remove the cap at this point. I mean, it's not, it's not gonna do a whole lot when it comes to protecting just the pillar. It's mainly the large flat areas that I want it to protect. So I am gonna remove it at this point right now. Squeeze you some of this down, and let's just get the whole thing off. Now it looks way nicer. So I like to do this without adding heat. Because if we add heat, again, we can cause distortion. So look how easy that was to just kind of stretch down and I mean didn't take much at all perfect my my uh, squeegee is still slightly wet from the shield guard on the other on the back of the quarter panel there so I'm going to use it again it's curling itself around the top which is perfect it means I don't have to worry ever about anything ever happening up there so I've masked this entire area. I can cut on it safely, but don't push too hard. If you push through the vinyl and your tape, that is your own responsibility. So make sure your blade is at its sharpest level and you don't push hard. As far as cutting goes, I can't teach you how to cut. I can show you, but you'll have to practice. So again, I don't have a white car and this gap is actually super tight. So I'm just gonna cut along the bottom edge and then tuck in the rest afterwards. When I cut, I cut on the fender side. Now we're gonna take care of some of this right, right now and finish it all up, finish most of it up. I'll do some of the cutting for you, like I said. And uh, that'll be it, we'll move on to the door after this. So we want to seal the deal in this area right here before we finish it all off. 
So we're going to go over with heat. And I use the buffer side first. And just make sure everything's nice and tight. Perfect. Right here. So I cut out this area first so that I can do the wheel well afterwards, but I want to cut out also this area right here because I want to be able to do the wheel well as a whole entire separate piece. So again, we start, we find a gap, we push very gently, All right, it's right there, I can actually see it, and then we don't need to have our blade out more than a couple of clicks because that creates instability. So I'm not all the way through yet. I'm gonna continue from here and then go out to the door and stop. We can also do the door. So I'm gonna start inside, go up. I need to snap a blade off because it's getting a little dull. Run my blade down the back side of the door. Very gently. You don't wanna have a lot of blade out here either because you could cut in to the quarter panel on the other side. Now I have a dent in my door here, so it's getting a little funky right now. I'm gonna try and keep it straight. There we go. And that's that. Cut could have been a little cleaner if I didn't have a dent there. Now we're gonna take care of the wheel well. So over here, I like to kind of, over here, I like to create, a do a little cut and fold on my quarter panel because I didn't want to stretch the film so much. So I'm getting a bit of bunched up film here. I'm going to cut the vinyl and I'm going to fold the vinyl over itself. I do the bottom first and then the top will overlap. beautiful beautiful corner even though I cut and fold instead of stretching it's still gonna look great you're gonna see it in a second so we trim this out keep in mind there are there are like this metal in here is, is not straight so there is some inconsistency to that but otherwise underneath the trunk here or by the window I'm gonna tuck into the window and I masked off the window because I'm gonna be cutting right now. And our blades can cut glass, so just be careful and keep that in mind. Now, to do this corner down here, I'm just gonna pull it slightly and get it around while the hood's up because it's easier to access with the hood up. Now that the hood is, now that that part's done, I can put the hood down, or sorry, the hood, the, uh, trunk. I've got a little masking tape that moved. There we go. Let's fix that. Perfect. So there's a rubber seal in here and I'm going to tuck the vinyl in right up to the rubber seal. Not past it, it's just only up to it. It's good. And then I'm gonna cut on the opposite side of the rubber seal in between the space. And then I'm gonna tuck in the rest. It's gonna leave me with about an eight tuck in. Super glide, super easy. You're gonna need a tucking tool of some kind to do this, be able to tuck in. I like to use my triangle for this, which is 
this guy right here. Pulling away with a triangle, tucking in with a squeegee. Take our time when we get down here. It's a little bit tricky with the curve. So you can see that I've done this many times. I split my seal at the bottom there, but I've done this many, many times. So again, it's nice and clean all the way up, it's all tucked in. On the top here, all we gotta do is leave ourselves about a quarter of an inch, and then we put our trim piece back on. I don't even have to really cut around here at all. I just gotta trim this piece back here. It's a little bit excessive. The rest of it is fine as it is. So. Keep it elevated and I keep tension on it and I can cut a bit of this out. Perfect. Shouldn't really need any heat because we stretched across. So that'll stay down. Again, we're gonna move down to the front here. And same deal. I'm gonna use my trusty wrap stick flex, get in there a little further, a little nicer, and she's good. Great. So, as far as the quarter panel goes, yeah, we're just gonna trim this out afterwards. I'm gonna cut the video a little shorter here. I did show you some cutting, some corners, and that kind of stuff. Laying the film on with the capping, not that hard to do. I think it's been about 45 minutes or so for the whole quarter panel. It's done. It's going to take me another two minutes to do this. Uh, otherwise, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it was informative. If it was, don't forget to hit the thumbs up. If you guys want to see more videos, don't forget the like button. I have plenty on the way. I have tons of actually backlogs right now with uh, videos to upload and edit. But hey, it's come, they're coming along. Anyways, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Take care.